Question number one should be, how long have you all been on drugs? <laughs> Never, actually. Uh, I don't even take ibuprofen. Five years now? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bleak Haven. I'm your host, The Birdman. And uh, instead of me just telling everybody who's here, I'm just going to have them go down the line. So we'll start with Rufus. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Rufus, and I'm one of the artists for Bleak Haven, and happy to be here. Right on. And uh, it's Alex, also a writer. <laughs> Yeah, you're just here. Just he here. just stays here. He just <laughs> <lives>. <laughs> he <laughs> just lingers. He lives here. I show up. He's around. And people tell me to do things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm Stanley. And if you don't know who I am, watch the other episodes. So just, yeah, I guess listen. Don't watch. I watch your podcast, and I really oh, enjoy what good. I see in my mind. I think we're all gathered here to talk about Brynock today. And what is Brynock? That's the question, right? Uh, Brynock is a beautiful orc man and uh, yeah. one of my favorite creations in general. Big green, not so, so mean. Yeah. Right? <laughs> He's a good dude. Um, Brynock is, I guess, our introduction to the multiverse, is how I'm putting it. So it's our first Bleak Haven title that's outside of the main Bleak Haven universe. And what a universe it is. It is not like the other one at all. <laughs> Ort is a very much different place than Bleak Haven. Yeah. Ort being the the world of Brynock, the the fantasy land. Alex actually came up with the name. Really? Uh, so how'd you yeah. come up with the name of Ort? Thought it was funny. So I got drunk, <laughs> so I got I, drunk one night I and I watched a, Family Guy. A word and, uh, for Earth <laughs> just came just to me. <laughs> slap an umlaut on the beginning there and call it good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Ort sounds like the planet that the aliens are like. Look, if you blink. You'll pass it. Yep. You have to really look out for Ort. It, it's the last place with a gas station for the next several it honestly, billion uh, light years. It so. honestly sounds Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like Slavic like Ort. Or, or, or Slavic, maybe. Or or stop yeah. here and get your maple syrup before you head on down to the rest of the world. <laughs> They all live in a place called Ort, and Ort is much more magical than the regular Bleak Haven universe. So that's kind of how we set up the multiverse, is like other multiverses, different choices make different worlds, obviously. Sure. But this one, in the Bleak Haven multiverse, it's also kind of the magic saturation as well. So this is, is a world filled with chaotic magic and so many silly things happen in this world this is just our justification to say okay uh brynock is in the same multiverse as the regular bleak haven stuff okay all right and uh like uh what i assume you did the art for it correct? i did the inking and the the design like the initial stuff and then uh Cade and others they colored it because they were helping me out what all went into that? Right. Well, these were Cade's creations, so he gave me a rundown of all the main characters with kind of an initial idea of what he was thinking. And then I shot back some drawings that were concept sketches. And then we kind of went back and forth a little bit on some of the design. Because originally, I didn't realize that Brynock was even an orc. He was a <laughs> barbarian, so I drew him as a barbarian. And uh, Kate helped me, you know, course correct there. And I actually, it's part of the joy of collaboration that I love. Because you get to take an idea and let it evolve to help it, to help it take shape. And I say help because I, I may be the artist, but there could be other artists that come on as well that add their sense of of style and flavor to the characters. I'm really privileged to say I helped kind of got the ball rolling. Sure. I mean, yeah. Like, I I wouldn't have guessed he was an orc either. <laughs> now I have him on my keychain. You have a keychain? Yeah. yeah. It's cash money. It'll be destroyed by me. That's <laughs> fine. fine. We'll make more. Then you can replace it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> just more keychains. <laughs> yeah. That's just a keychain laundering business. We're not really about comics. It's all about the keychains. The first one's free. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they get you. I thought I was just reading comic books. You don't pay for the next one. You sleep with the fishes. <laughs> the initial concept of Brynock as a comic book character came from Dungeons and Dragons. The way I viewed Brynock is what does a, your classic throwaway campaign look like in universe? So it's these stupid player characters bumbling through the world and they have like a mission, they have a quest, but they're sidetracked, there's side quests, there's other stuff to do. So that's where it was kind of born. The Brynock as a whole was an actual campaign that ca 
Massey DM'd, and we just did it because we had everybody there, but Alex was actually missing. Was, uh, the most uh, important thing was my absence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, decided to just do a silly campaign, and I had already had the name Brynock the Destroyer from several years earlier, so I decided I wanted to play a character that was focused on just the glory of battle because that was a character i've never played before is like somebody who really wanted to just fight we all just kind of made silly stuff so kendall made basely and tanner made <laughs> ben and then blockus didn't come along later but ryan made uh, blockus and then uh, brie we actually made up for the story is like what cassie's character would be mm -hmm. is what we based that off of but she dm'd um so and it just kind of all fell into place like we just had a really good dynamic and so over the past couple years i'm like i was thinking about it again and i'm like you know i'd make a pretty funny comic book so we decided to use that as those as our characters to kind of poke fun at what D D is sure as well as making fun of other like video game rp and that sort of thing cool very cool i i do get a kick out of all the characters like i, I feel like we should talk about some of yeah, some of the side them. characters <laughs> i don't know if any of them are like side characters like the main party well, in the way i see it is more of like a sitcom lineup there's not really a main character like you could say arguably there's a main character of a sitcom yeah. but all the characters have like specific episodes and they're like they're all fleshed out so that's what i want to do with brynock is to flesh everyone out Makes sense. But yeah, I think we should talk about them because they're pretty great. I, I think they're more than pretty great. I got a <laughs> kick out of most of them, especially Block. It's funny because like when I read the comic book, instantly in my head I just started going through different voices for each character. <laughs> and the only one that I really just put voice to the character was Teddy. And I gave him the Barry White voice. <laughs> <laughs> and it just fit perfectly into the storyline. <laughs> Tedward's one of my favorite characters. Honestly, I based Tedward off of throwaway characters that Alex has had before. We have the Emberwood campaign, which is the Bleak Haven. Coming soon, trademark. Yeah. <laughs> coming soon, eventually. <laughs> eventually. Snag it now before, come, come before Taylor Swift snags for next album. It'll be here <laughs> yeah, eventually. It's, it'll get there. Um, <laughs> it's a lot harder to make a tabletop RPG than we thought. Sure. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> We're, we're working on it. Surprise. But through one of the test campaigns, Alex played a character called Clarence, yeah. Clarence. And he was just a guy from, like, Milwaukee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, jeez! Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Tedward was fun to draw, too, because here we have this juxtaposition of fantasy, Brynock, who's like the epitome of a brutish orc next to a teddy bear. Yeah. And <laughs> what more can we say about that? I don't know. Well, I'm interested. How did the characters formation? With character designs, none of them are really how I imagined them, except for Brynock. I did always imagine Brynock with, like, the mohawk, and, like, I, I didn't tell Rufus to put the mohawk in there because I didn't know if it would work, but he did anyway. So I just kind of gave <laughs> some brief descriptions obviously not good enough descriptions because he didn't know that, <laughs> that Brynock was an orc. Nope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I gave him some brief descriptions and I was just basically like, have fun with it. I just wanted Rufus to have as much fun with this as possible. So, like I said, uh, from what I did, like I, I knew who the characters were. We had everything, all that lined up for a few years by this point. Sure. So I just gave him some descriptions um, He and he can kind of take it over from there because we just kind of went back yeah. and forth from that point. So, I mean, when you're designing characters, in terms of uh, aesthetics, you want to have different levels. So you have, like, the big hulking guy, which is Brynock. But then you're going to have more wispy characters, more stubby ones. So, like, you have Ben, who is, like, the absolute opposite of Brynock. He's short, he's pudgy, very soft, you know, flabby arms. He's got a really dink, really stupid-looking hat <laughs> that I love to draw every time. Um, a little crown on top. A little crown on top, because it's a backstory there, but... Um, then you've got Blockus, who, uh, honestly, I, I look at him like a spout. If, if you could contain a frustrated spout, that's Blockus. <laughs> and I wanted to convey that with his really ridiculous hair and his long beard. He's supposed to be the wise wizard, but he's not. And <laughs> he's the dumbest person. Like, <laughs> like, that's, that, was our, that was my favorite part about Blockus, is like he is supposed to be the sage, like the, the sage archetype of the wizard sure. but he's the dumbest person he's the he's the most useless one and he has no wisdom to offer anyone <laughs> nope and he's just
just there. <laughs> yep. Like he helps. Like obviously they they get in the in the comic they get out of the situation because of him. But he's it's not because he's intelligent like Woody yeah. or whatever. He's just kind of there. <laughs> um, yep. And and I did not imagine Blockus in that way. I always imagined Blockus as like a, a naive young man. But I liked th- this design better of like going with that archetype of this this old wizard man. Yeah. I liked that a lot. He he looks like he he really can muster up a lot of knowledge yeah. and then as you as, as you go on reading you're just like I can't believe how stupid this and guy then is. Then he opens his mouth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> The next character that I really had fun with was Brie, actually, because she's stuck in this group of idiot men. <laughs> she's the one that's really trying to pull everyone back on track. We have a mission. That's why we added Brie, is because <laughs> we all have that person who wants to push the, the main goal. Yeah, like, boots guys, on the ground, Brie. We gotta, <laughs> yeah, we gotta get there. We gotta do it. But then she's also subject to sidetracking, but she's also the only one that actually cares. Yeah. But can you blame her, but, though? She has to follow these boobs around <laughs> <laughs> and try to you know help them not bumble along and yeah. so her look because she's the cleric so she's got more nature magic and she's the healer she's a druid am i right yeah so i kind of harken back to some old paganism because you gotta love good old paganism absolutely for artistic reference and you know they love their cows so i was <laughs> like what if i made her half cow so I gave her cow horns, and I thought, well, let's just see what Cade says. That was super funny. <laughs> I loved it. I was like... Uh, she looks great. She's she's uh, one of my favorite characters. I love them all. Yeah. But, like I love Bree just because of how she's the smartest out of everybody. But again, she doesn't really know how to harness any leadership capacity. But she's the most useful. But she also doesn't want to be useful in the way she's useful. That makes sense. In, in my mind, the player of Bree didn't want to be a cleric, but they needed a cleric. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I'll heal you, <laughs> idiots. So I think that adds a lot of depth to her character in general, that she is a cleric, but she would really rather be fighting. Like, she'd rather be the warrior type, but everybody else is the warrior type, except for Ben and Blockus. She's, oh. just, she's just happy being a cow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and well, and see, it's funny because when you do that collaboration, it gave Kate new ideas for a new funny bit that we'll be doing later on, because eventually you might meet her parents. Yeah. And uh, I'm just, I'll just leave it at that. So many great possibilities there. And then what we had Basley. Yeah. Basley, he's your throwaway generic human. He's the token human character yeah. that you you literally only offers his sword and his quick wit. And I wanted to give him more of like a narrow face that's more sh- like pointed, because he's got the quick wit, the tongue. He likes to get at under Bree's skin, especially. <laughs> And uh, his character was a little more tricky to do because I'm like, how do I do a generic human that could still do stuff? And it was he was the most challenging out of all the characters, not as straightforward for me. When he came about, I was like, well, there he is. And I think He's it was good. you that suggested he needed the, the locks. Yeah, well, because specifically because you made him look like Kendall, who created the character in the first place. <laughs> so I'm like, you need to give him like the uh, Anakin Skywalker <laughs> locks. Yeah, we don't want to get sued uh, for likeness rights here. <laughs> and, then, and yeah, I made him look a little bit more like uh, Kendall just because I thought it was really funny. <laughs> um, Some of these characters were based on real people. <laughs> and, and we just wanted to make it like... And again, not to say Kendall's generic, but we wanted to make him that generic-looking <laughs> human. like that's Because nobody else in the party is a human. Sure. It's just him. He's the only like pure human there, so it's just the regular human fighter and just make him like the most average. Like He's the middle child and... <laughs> yes, you know, and it's it's cool to see him in action too, because he's actually the one that spurs the next part of the story in our first chapter, and not really because he's intending to, of course, um, because he's he's basically been shooed away from trying to hit on the virgin that <laughs> yeah, Susan's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so Susan was my favorite, I think, character out of all the, the that chapter, just because. <laughs> well, they have to understand. So. Blockus has the power, as the god of celibacy, to summon a virgin to his disposal 
for one hour. And so, you know, they basically make a deal with this god of celibacy in exchange for basically being on call. And yeah. apparently, it's like Susan... a deal with the devil, sort of thing. <laughs> but right. it's block us. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to require your services. It literally yeah. means uh, coming and helping us getting out of a jam, which is yeah. what Susan does. And it looks like she's got pulled out of a board meeting she, that she was about yeah. to have. And her expressions were fun to draw, like just putting a woman in a business suit. I mean, if you think it's, it. the teddy bear was 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 funny enough, but then Susan was just like, oh my gosh, I love this comic. Well, Susan's great too. She's like the epitome of everybody who doesn't play Dungeons and Dragons in my mind. You know, like, you she's are, just very yeah. bland and like yeah. very just. I don't want to be yeah, here. I got more. This is so dumb. Yeah. This is ridiculous. I could be. I could be at an accountant party or something lame. You know. And oh. she was like, "This is like her lunch hour that she yep. has to." Hang out <laughs> Pretty now. much, yeah. She's pissed about it. <laughs> exactly. I gave her a clipboard because that's her weapon. Do you know choice. how funny that if she was during lunchtime, oh, like at work well, or something? That, that's how. That's what I imagined. Like when I wrote it, I imagined like she just walking she, around like, no, I'm taking, I'm eating my sandwich. Leave me alone. Well, well, well she's gonna have to take this as yeah. her lunch hour. That's <laughs> yes, true. yeah. Cause because because you know, the corporate world. You know, she's like the and she does. She's not enthused with block us whatsoever you know and i don't know i mean it's up to Cade, but i think that she might have to come back at some point no i agree and and <laughs> susan's not the only virgin that block us <laughs> obviously so i would more. hope not just just a hint at she just might be stories. the most sarcastic one though i, I have i have to oh. imagine though oh my gosh and and that goes back to block us i love that block us can only do like three things uh we can summon a virgin and later we'll see that he has the classic wizard spell fireball that he'll overuse. <laughs> <laughs> Blockus always thinks he's the best, most intelligent person. So you can't one up Blockus ever because he's always <laughs> like, "I'm a very intelligent person." And that's that's another one of my favorite bits of his character is he always has like these boomery contributions to conversations. It's what I like to call the the Blockus transition. <laughs> where he talks about something that's tangentially related, but not really what they're talking about. And then, every, then there's just silence. <laughs> something he does a lot. Yeah. Lots of fun to design. And, you know, as I got to illustrate it and stuff, I had to keep that in mind when I would give them characterization or they're in, in, you know, having a dialogue or in a certain scene, how I would compose it based on their personalities and how they might react. I gave Blockus a unibrow just because... Just like a floating unibrow. One of the best, <laughs> yeah. one of the best expressions. It's just his eyebrow. It's, <laughs> I love it. It's like perfectly cartoon and everything. It's it, just... That leads me to another thing I really like about the designs is they're all, like Rufus was talking about earlier, they're all very unique. I don't like watching things or reading things that where everybody kind of looks the same, so I, sure. I really appreciate that Rufus gave um, uniqueness and personality to each of the characters. And on top of that, I like this callback to kind of like older animation as well. Blockus looks like he could come out of a Betty Boop cartoon, and I like that <laughs> yeah. a lot. It's kind of going for that. That's well, the great thing when you get that creative license from the author. Not every project's going to do that. And this one was an opportunity to really kind of just let my freak flag fly, if you will. <laughs> and uh, just create some really fun characters in a fun setting. And, you know, it, it just it flowed really well. And, and it was something I still wanted to be grounded in a reality that still could be menacing. At the same time, hilarious. Yeah. And uh, that, that took a little figuring out. I'm not gonna lie, but once we once we found that stride, it was magic. And, and you did a good job with Kax too, because Kax, uh, the the yes. plant monster, is very it's a very scary monster, but also there's some comedic moments. But you did feel the threat there, like you have the the weapons and stuff strewn about from other fallen heroes, and yep. so there was real threat to these characters, even though it is a goofy cartoon world, and I appreciated that. Yeah, it was so much fun to do. Like I really. Like, can't say enough about how fun this project was. We had to do it really quickly. It was a lightning round kind of thing. But, you know, as we progress, I'm looking forward to just helping expand the universe. And uh, down the road, there might be other artists we involve as well that can add their flavor as well. So it's it's a big playground that Cade's in introducing with his writers to uh, let us artists play in. And it's, it's so much fun to write 
as well because it's it's kind of cathartic because it's not the more serious nature of bleak haven they don't have to focus on it as hard and it's just been really fun to write because uh alex and actually donald and i have been working on the next several long form episodes rufus is working on an episode right now but we have a couple more that are going to be um as long as this first chapter that we're gonna that we're excited to get out we've got some fun new characters and fun new aspects to explore so yeah this one was just about helping set the stage introduce some of the main characters and kind of just set our our adventure afoot if you will yeah yeah it was a, i think it was a per, like a really great start uh, i it, it's just one of those comic books in my opinion that has the right amount of great writing but at the same time it's entertaining because of the art and like the you know not a lot of art styles are as unique as Brynock, and I really enjoyed it. I really wanted to make sure that was clear, because it was going to be a story that, well, there's not many like like it, period. And I, I myself, like Kate, I don't like redundancy, and I wanted Brynock to have his own style, his own flavor. So when you see it, at least in comic book form, you know, once again, there's different iterations, and we could maybe talk a little bit about you know what your brother did. Yeah, Josh. Josh but, had an amazing yeah. cover. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> yeah, print it's a house style that once again, it's room to play in. Hopefully, people can enjoy it. But you know, it's something that once again can give that really clear flavor of oh, the, we're in Ort now. This is Ort. Mm-hmm. You know, we've now hopped over the multiverse. Yeah, exactly. And and or you know, I imagine it has all sorts of different landscape. Well, I guess real quick, if I may, just give a little nod to Josh, Cade's brother, for our first like physical copy of Brynock, he did a cover. Now, it's fun because he went a total different direction, which is more hardcore, more like, serious looking. Serious yeah. looking version of Brynock, which I mean, and I I was privileged enough to be able to ink it, and I had a blast because he did an amazing job with that style, and I loved the interpretation. That was a beautiful cover. It yeah, really good. It is a fantastic cover, and that leads into the joke of uh, in the comic book industry, they often have different cover artists for the interior book, <laughs> and it looks nothing yeah, like exactly. the interior. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it, uh, it sets a completely I'm different surprised. tone, for a different a, expectation. Yeah, you look at it and you're like, oh, this is going to be metal, and then you open it up and you're like, oh, this is an entertaining cartoon. Yeah, exactly, because. <laughs> Jim Lee and Alex Ross, they just do covers now. So you get like, uh, he used to do Spider-Man, and then he did Captain America, Alex Ross. I don't know if he does it, the Captain America still, but the Captain America, this a beautiful Alex Ross cover, and then you open it up and it's just nothing like it. Sure. Um, it's like regular comic book stuff. And so we just really wanted to play on that aspect of you get this amazing like piece on the on the covers, like really cool. Like cause you got Brynock there with with Tim in his hand and biting Cax in the background and there's skulls all over the place and then you turn the page and it's the there's the party right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the little flying pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was just pure whimsy, by the way. That's kind of a nod to George Lucas where he said you gotta throw a little bit of whimsy into your world building because that's part of what makes it feel more authentic. So flying pigs do live in Ort. Apparently. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Who they're, knew? they're around. Yeah. <laughs> Along with many other creatures we're going to discover. I'm pretty exactly. excited. Yeah. If you believe a pig can fly. <laughs> they fly here. Obviously they fly. That's just a common fact in Ort. <laughs> you can just do that just like the Superman cover. You'll believe a pig can fly. <laughs> Great. Yeah, um, no. This is this is a really great series. I'm looking forward to seeing more from you guys. Um, I'm just really excited to keep going with with Brynock. Brynock's one of my favorite creations. Brynock himself is uh, really interesting to me because he rides that line between pretending to be stupid and actually being stupid. So I think that that's one of the most interesting aspects to Brynock. And that's what makes him like really interesting for me to write is because he'll be sitting there talking about... I'll just give away one of the jokes in my the one I'm writing. He's sitting there, he's like, Brynock doesn't understand changelings. And then Bray's like, oh, well, changelings are when fairies replace babies, you know, with their own. And Brynock's like, Brynock understand general premise, but what practical purpose, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Make sure when you do that, he wears glasses and he looks dignified, you know? So, like, it's interesting to write Brynock. He has to borrow the set. The monocle. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) 
it, we can set up a lot of really fun jokes with him because he's like, okay, he's dumb, but then he like actually says something intelligent about it. I think that's one <laughs> of the funniest parts about Brynock. So I, I'm really excited to keep this going and to grow our audience with him because I think there's an audience out there for Brynock. You know, it's we, we did this kind of... Well, to introduce the series, but the reason for the rush was we were meeting a deadline. We entered into an anime contest. Yeah, we did with Brynock. <laughs> the style that is not anime whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. And I, they, yeah. They weren't fans of different things, I don't think, so. But the, the thing is, we got it done. Yeah. And, uh, hey, you can't you can't be judgmental at an anime I, at anything. I can't. You know, they uh, can't either. You uh, know, that's just... what I'm getting. At. <laughs> you know, they can't either. <laughs> I was just hoping that they'd enjoy uh, something new. Right. But, and uh, you know, the thing is, I think they will. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the fact that we made something distinct that will be recognizable as time goes on. I'm not going to compare what I do to anything like Jack Kirby, but I'm using the same concept. Jack Kirby was iconic because he did something that was a departure from comics of his day to the point where as things picked up, Stan Lee was telling all the new artists, you got to draw like Stan. Now, I don't want people to draw like Rufus per se, but as an artist, I aspire to unique styles. I want their each story to have a unique flavor or the, the world to feel consistent to itself. And I bring up the anime thing is because there's so much great stuff in that forum. And although it didn't necessarily pan out with the contest because it wasn't anime, it got done and it, it did resonate with people. And I think that's the cool thing is to see other people interact with it and enjoy it and get their take on it. And even if they hate my style, so long as they read the comic and enjoy it, you know, they're, they're going to remember the style. That's the main thing. You know, there's certain styles that I still don't like, but I instantly remember it when I see it. I'm like, okay, it's that guy or it's that person's mm -hmm. style or that world. Mm -hmm. And I can respect it, you know, just like there's anime stuff I'll never agree with, but I can respect <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, that's, that's, that's the point <laughs> I'm making. That's the, that's the point I'm making. <laughs> they can't be mad at what you make. Just because, like, you can't be mad at what they make. Exactly. So it works it, out. Agreed to disagree. Yeah. All right, but Brannock Waifus win? <laughs> yeah. No, I, think, I, I think... I I agree. I think um, having this more unique style has been really great for me it's something i'm more proud of honestly i would rather have this style than have an anime style and have one uh, and that being said there which will... we would have won <laughs> if it was anime that's what i'm trying to tell you if it weren't for those meddling animators oh there there may be an anime episode of brian Ock later <laughs> only Please. only if he it's like old school samurai brian Ock. Well, no it'll be like all of them in high school perfect <laughs> perfect <laughs> Awesome. Absolutely, <laughs> high school DXD teenage Brynock. romance. Yeah, oh. Oh but I'm I'm really proud of Brynock. I love all the characters. I love the stories, and I'm really grateful that uh, Rufus um, agreed to do it with me, and that we were able to really knock it out of the park, in my opinion. And I'm excited to see where he goes because Brynock's a, a beautiful man. Yes, he is. All yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, him and all his three chest hairs. Yeah, he's got, he has exactly three chest hairs that he curls every morning. They're naturally straight, so hey. it doesn't look great. <laughs> I remember like, middle school. I know what I, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Yeah, no, I I really like Brian, and I really enjoy the art because the art reminds me of like it just re it's nostalgic. Like it reminds no. me of like old. Well, no, I wouldn't say old school. I would say like more my generations or our generations like animation and stuff like yeah. that. I know it's not animation, but it, no, it it's like that like old it. cartoony. Yeah. Yeah. sort of style I, I really like it uh, and it's nostalgic for me in general because it's it's that old kind of cartoony style and at the same time it's it's Dungeons and Dragons which is nostalgic yeah. for a lot of people exactly. as well but I think that's that's like the the fun again of Brynock is we can take these things that happen in D&D &D all the time and we kind of just gloss over because we're in a fun fantasy world and really focus on them and be like okay this is stuff okay he rolled a net one he rolled a net 20 and there are like times in the comic book where it's like okay Brynock obviously rolled a nat 1 and he got slung across the yeah. landscape. <laughs> or, yeah. you know, he hit a nat 20 and, and did whatever. And, like, that's the kind of stuff... I don't know, it's just... It's funny to me to see that stuff played out in the world and not really call back to the real world, world at all. Just, like, 
see what it looks like played out. Well, and it's really universe. great because like you don't you don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So you're not going into this expecting something. You're going into this just like okay, this is going to be entertaining. <laughs> this can be really bad cuts. or really good. <laughs> yeah. So and that's what makes it. Fun. Buckle up, Buttercup. Here we go. <laughs> exactly. Alex, anything? Any last yeah. words? I, I can't wait for the squishy subplot to really yeah. you know, really work out. Yeah, right. yeah, the squishy's little, great. He's got his hat now, and that's all that matters. He's the man of the house. <laughs> oh, squishy, geez. squishy's one of my favorite bits, and I'll give uh, Donald credit for this. He doesn't remember suggesting this, but he told me that Tedward needs to say goodbye to his family, and then like so, I latched onto that, and I'm like, I think that really pushes the comic book and then makes it better because you have this you know, kind of serious battle, and there's kind of a couple little things, and then, like, we have this one last really funny joke. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so, my wife, when I first showed her the comic, she was loving it, she was enjoying the characters, and her favorite character was Tedward. Until, (laughs) she's like, wait a minute, (laughs) he's not a good bear at all! (laughs) He just abandoned his family! (laughs) Which is why I put the Barry White voice on (laughs) No, it's. I thought that was pretty funny at the end of it. Yeah. I was like, this this is exactly the character. I, I, I know that everyone's my favorite character, but Squishy's my favorite character. <laughs> See, and that it's part actually great. almost didn't make it in because it was. We were toward the end. We were getting close to the deadline, and Kate's like, "If you could, if you could make, if you could swing it, Rufus, if I, you can put him in there, yeah." Let, and you know, it was so worth it. It was totally worth the extra sweat because, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's just a great way to end, you know, we have our monster that died, and then the abandoned child. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tune I... in next week to the abandoned <laughs> child episode. <laughs> and, and there will be... Squishy's revenge! <laughs> and Tedward, again, I think is a really fun character. I based Tedward off of kind of like an adult in a children's cartoon. Like, that's kind of the way I wanted him to act. But also, he's just the worst person ever. <laughs> and and not like, because I know that t- there's like Ted, where the Ted word, like, say in F words and stuff. Sure. But I don't, I didn't want to do the, the you know, the juxtaposition of having a teddy bear do that. I wanted to have the juxtaposition of the teddy bear who would, like, die if he heard a swear word. Sure. But then abandons his family. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like uh, he's, like, very surface level uh, wholesome. And then yeah. deep down, he's a really terrible person. <laughs> the, the main thing is, I think. We want there to be a lot of delicious combinations here, and you get that with D and D. You get that with the comic and the story, and we hope that readers can, you know, resonate with that, and hopefully just enjoy the ride. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's where a lot of the humor comes from. Is like we have this fantastical world full of, you know, orcs and sentient teddy bears and stuff, <laughs> but. At the end of the day, they wanted to make them feel like real people. So, because sure. <laughs> I think that's funny. I think that like, oh, you have this fantastical orc, but he's like, you know, uh, you concerned know about his friend's honor. You know, do his taxes and, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Why not, not pay taxes in many years? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Brian, the, the, the IRS. <laughs> you, you know, the freelancing barbarian business can go down. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's. It's a rough uh, industry to be. They in. might repossess his club. Yeah, well, good luck. <laughs> Tim, they have a special bond. Brian and Tim, Can we just so. maybe down the road? I know you got a lot of episodes. We need a spot where he, someone, does try to repossess all of his belongings, <laughs> which is really just a club. Yeah, it's just Tim. <laughs> See what happens. He just go. I, I can just Tim. imagine it. He just gets all sad like Thor misses Mjolnir. <laughs> that, that is the kind of relationship they have, but deeper, you know. Yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Almost sexual. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's... No. I, I think it's... He I, only likes Elvish yeah. women. <laughs> By the way, we still have to do that bit where he, he finds an Elvish woman, and the only thing great about her are her ears. Yeah. <laughs> lovely ears. Lovely yeah. ears. He just can't get over them. Those lobes, I tell you. That, that's going to be a great bit. So once again, we're setting up a lot, yeah. you guys. Setting up a lot for you guys to enjoy. It's not going to be hard to do because it's already pretty funny. A lot of great possibilities to go in. So, woo! Stay tuned. Um, why don't we like tell people where you can find all our social medias and stuff? Links are in the description. Make sure to yeah. check it out. <laughs> go to Bleak Haven. All that good stuff. You can find me the Birdman at all my Birdman stuff. So I'm on everything. So, all right. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>